Hey YouTube, Scapegoat here, and today we are using Yu-Gi-Oh! Organization as a source, as they have posted that a, another voting poll is coming to the OCG. Uh, similar to the Shadal Structure Deck poll, where Shadal's won, we're having a Collection Pack 2020 poll, where you can choose any of the anime-exclusive archetypes to become a real archetype in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, so pretty much the ones you get to choose from are Jean-Claude's Ninjas, Tenma's Wicked Cards, Alice Doll Parts, Jim Crocodile's Fossil, uh, The Devil's Abyss Cards, Sid's Wheels, Fortuno's Shaman, Todoroki's uh, Debuggers, Ergy's Thorn Princess, uh, Suzio's Guts, Spectre's Sun Avalon, and Blood Shepherd's Throne Cards. So, for what I would suggest is you vote for whatever you want. Obviously, your opinion matters before anyone else's, but this video is going to delve in which cards are going to affect the metagame if they print uh, the certain cards that'll do that at all. But I'm going to go over the top three picks that I would pick. So that being said, we're going to start off with John claudes Ninjas. He is the third pick for me, uh, and only because he has a very small monster pool, but two of his cards would affect ninjas the archetype as a whole uh, one of his monsters is when this card is summoned you can special summon one ninja monster from your hand or deck so obviously you can summon the uh, gold ninja uh, hanzo and all that stuff and get their effects assuming that they work verbatim they could change effects obviously uh, and a trap card that activate only during your opponent's battle phase and the battle phase immediately so it's a generic uh Threatening Roar, or Wabaku, whatever you want to call it, where your opponent can't really do anything. So, that's really it for him. Uh, not the best pick, but third pick out of all, all the other cards, pretty much. Uh, second to that would be my second pick, is Jim Crocodile's Fossils. He's got uh, quite a bit of a uh, pool, but mostly because of his fusion pool. And he's got a few good monsters and spells. So the best monster I saw was when this card is normal summon, you can select one level four or lower normal monster in your opponent's graveyard and special summon it to your side of the field. It can't be attack or attributed. This card's attack is equal to that monster's original attack. So it's pretty much uh, it just special summons a monster from your opponent's uh, graveyard. It does say a uh, normal monster. Uh, however, uh, they could always change that or, you know, cards interacting in the archetype can be different. Uh, but his spells and fusions are actually pretty cool. Uh, so remove from play a fusion material monster that's listed on fossil fusion monsters, uh, from your graveyard and your opponent's graveyard. Special summon monsters from that fusion from your fusion deck. So pretty much miracle fusion using one monster from your graveyard and your opponent's graveyard. Uh, which is pretty cool considering all of his fusion monsters interact in a way similar to uh, uh, Invoked, where you're banishing from your pretty much graveyard uh, different attributes or types, whatever. Uh, and they have a spell card. Activate only by sending one rock monster from your deck to the graveyard. Shuffle your, direct and, shuffle your deck and draw one card. So that's pretty much the card that stood out to me. It's pretty much Upstar Goblin, uh, for rocks at least. So rocks have some sort of advantage when you send some of the cards to the graveyard as a whole like generic archetype, the whole rock uh, typing. Uh, so there's certain cards that interact in the graveyard, uh, and more so with this deck, you want the cards in your graveyard for fossil fusion. Uh, and then they have a bunch of fusion monsters. Like I said, they interact similar to Invokes, where you're using the graveyard similarly to banish cards with typing. Uh, to summon a card that's different. This card likes to summon your rock monsters with your opponent's uh, typings. So if they have a warrior, you can do rock warrior or rock spellcaster, and like a different monster will come out. So that's pretty much why I chose Jim as my second pick. He's got better generic cards than Jean Claude, uh, but not as big of a pool or better cards as the number one pick, which I think everybody should pick is uh, Spectre and he has a Sun Avalon archetype. A lot of link monsters, a lot of good generic traps or spells and it's just based around plants which is one of the most uh, heavily uh, built archetypes of cards. So plants as you know everybody remembers uh, 
Dandy Plant, back when Jeff Jones stopped by CS. Uh, so what better to uh, choose than another plant archetype and bolster their support? We've got uh, that deck, obviously, from Jeff Jones, and then we have uh, Sylvans and all that stuff, generic plant support. So that's pretty much why I chose this as number one, but let's just try to get into it because this isn't the only page. He has a lot of cards. Uh, so he has a link monster that's two plant monsters. Gump uses a link material to turn that its link summon. Cannot be targeted for attacks, but that does not prevent your opponent from attacking you directly. If this card is link summoned using Sun Avalon link monsters as materials, it gains this effect. Up to twice per turn, you take battle damage or effect damage. You can special summon one Sunvine link monster from your extra deck to a zone a Sun Avalon link monster points to. And if you do, gain life points equal to the damage you took. So, from what I remember in the anime, uh, by having the Sun Avalon monsters up, your opponent can attack you directly. But um, with this card, you can gain the life points back all while special summoning more link monsters from your extra deck, which that's already pretty nutty. And then the second link monster, there's a lot of them, I just chose the best ones. It's two plus plant monsters, it's, it's got a similar effect. It cannot be used as a link material to turn that is link summoned, cannot be targeted for attacks, but does not prevent your opponent from attacking you directly. Once per turn, if a monster this card points to for attack uh, is targeted for attack, you can move that monster to another main monster zone to negate the attack. If this card is link summoned using a Sun Avalon link monster as a material, it gains its effect. Up to three times per turn, you take damage. You can special summon a one Sunvine Link Monster from your extra deck to a zone a Sun Avalon Link Monster points to. And if you do, gain life points equal to the damage you took. So, uh, quite a few of the monsters have uh, the very first effect that cannot be used in Link Material to turn it summoned. And then the last effect uh, that gaining life points and then summoning Sun Avalon Monsters. So, it's very spammy, very U Linky. Uh, and. There's also monsters that don't have that effect. Uh, as you can see in the bottom left bottom left corner is my favorite monster. Uh, I think he's on the second page though, but we'll get into that later. So the next card is two plus plant link monsters. Cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Cannot be targeted for attacks, but does not prevent your opponent from attacking you directly. Once per turn, you can tribute one plant monster this card points to and target face up spell and trap cards your opponent controls up to the tributed link rating and destroy them. Monsters in your main monster zones cannot attack to turn this card activates effect. So he has a, a board wipe pretty much. So against rogue decks, he can uh, pretty much harpy fed the best of the field, which is pretty cool. Uh, the next link monster is two plus plant monsters, including a link monster. It cannot be used as a link summon. The turn it is link summoned. And if this card is link summoned, you can target one plant monster in your graveyard, special summon it in defense position to his own discard points to. Cannot be targeted for attacks, but does not prevent your opponent from attacking directly. At the start of your battle phase, you can target one Sunvine link monster this card points to. During this battle phase, it can attack up to the number of Sun Avalon link monsters you control. So it provides a multi attacking type of thing, which is pretty cool. And then the next page, you can see there's a lot, a lot of cards from this guy. And all the other guys didn't really have as vast of a card pool, or they didn't really have any meta impacting cards. So the next card I'm going over is the bottom left one, which was my favorite when watching Spectre. Uh, it does require a normal plant monster, but there are quite a few, or you could probably tech Rescue Rabbit to special summon like the normal monsters, and they have their own archetype uh, normal monster as well. If no Sun Avalon Link Monster points to this card, destroy this card. If this card is special summon, target one Sun Avalon Link Monster that points to this card. This card gains attack equal to that monster's link rating by 800. At the start of damage step, if this card battles an opponent's monster, you can activate this effect. If that opponent's monster is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, special summon it to special summon that opponent's monster to a zone that your Sun Avalon Link Monster points to. So he's got like a Goyo Guardian effect with no restriction. So you can special summon that monster to attack position and attack with it. So that alone is pretty cool. And obviously with um, uh, a Link 4, you're getting what? It's uh, 32. Is that right? 3200 attack. So he can max out at 32. Uh, usually he'll probably be about 16, 24, but you can get him to 32, I believe. Uh, so that's pretty cool. You can pretty much take out anything. 
Uh, next card is a plant effect monster. If this card is normal summon you and you control Sun Avalon monster, you can target one plant normal monster in your graveyard, special summon it. If you have two or more link monsters in the graveyard with the same name, you can banish this card from your graveyard. And one link monster you control and target one of those link monsters in your graveyard and special summon it. So that card just special summons more cards. And like I said, it'll special summon a uh, normal monster in your graveyard. So that's going to be helpful for link summoning. There's more uh, effect monsters that are similar to that. And then obviously the non-effect monster as well. But I didn't feel the need to list more or any of those at all because there's already so many cards. And another card I listed was a plant effect monster. When your opponent activates a card or an effect that targets one plant monster you control, quick effect, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if you do, negate the activation. So they have a hand trap. So that's also an additional reason why this card, this archetype is really good. So any type of card or an effect, you just negate it. Special summon this card. Crazy. Um, another spell card is if you control a Sun Avalon monster, activate this card by sending one card from your hand to the graveyard. And if you control no Sun Avalon monsters, destroy this card. There can only be one Sun Vine Shrine on the field. Once per turn, you can target one level 4 or lower plant monster that is normal in your graveyard. Special summon it. During the end phase, you can send this card to the graveyard. Target one trap in your graveyard. Set it to your spell and trap zone. So there's recursion for your normal monster, and then it also gets the trap cards too. Uh, another spell card is once per turn, you can tribute one link monster you control. Special summon one plant monster from your graveyard, but it has its effects negated. So uh, there's some niche utility there. And one of the last few cards, the trap. Activate this card by negating the effect of all monsters your opponent controls, then target one Link 4 or higher plant monster in your extra deck zone, extra monster zone. Its attack becomes equal to the total attack of all monsters it points to during damage calculation. Uh, when that monster leaves the field, destroy this card. So they have a board negator for your opponent. Uh, so they have floodgates. And then the, the next trap is. Your opponent cannot target Sun Avalon Link monsters you control with card effects. If an opponent's monster is destroyed by battle after damage calculation, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the link rating of the monster on the field with the highest uh, link rating. Your choice if tied times 100. If there are no Sun Avalon monsters on the field, destroy this card. So they have a card that prevents targeting as well. So that's the last card I picked. There's still several more. You can go take a look if you go look at Spectre's... Uh, deck list if you go on to the wiki and check it out but that's pretty much it that's my number one pick just because of the massive card pool and all the cards that they have i'm not sure how many cards they're gonna be getting but hopefully they'd be printing a vast majority of it because all of his cards work together pretty much so that's about it let me know what you guys think which archetype you guys want to be printed obviously go with your first choice uh this is just for meta relevancy uh, for Spectre, uh, Jim, and John claude So I would ask you to vote for Spectre. Of course, do what you need, do what you want. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you like it, I'll post uh, the winner. I'll post more videos like it. See what we can do, okay? Have a nice day, guys. Bye.